So in the last video I just made, I was right about here. I'd added the big picture with the door and the girl, and I'd used the multiply setting, and I'd added this grunge border on the outside. And then I went to um, try to save it, and my shockwave flash crashed. And so I spent some time troubleshooting so that I can tell you what that is and how to avoid it. Um, first of all, shockwave flash works differently in different browsers and you need to download flash to your computer but you also need to download well for most for firefox or internet explorer or mozilla they have built-in flash plugins that'll that'll come with it and they'll usually automatically update so it shouldn't be an issue except there's still a lot of conflicts between flash um, if your flash works on other sites like if youtube's working for you then this tool should work for you just the same. The main problem that I discovered was it's about the file size image. Um, because when you have, you're working with these really big pictures and you have several of them together, it's pretty fast to do the editing, but when you try to save it, you're saving a really big file. And so it's a mixture of your internet speed and to some extent, your computer power um, but not so much, because like when I use Photoshop, I need a pretty powerful computer to do everything I need to. I'm just using a, a Zen book. It's kind of like a netbook right now. Um, so it's a mid-range computer. It's not a high-end, powerful design computer. And, I, and usually it's fine to save this kind of thing. I was having specifically problems just with this image, and I haven't had this problem before. Um, and I'll show you the reason is because usually when I download files, I pick kind of a medium that's about um, 1600 wide by 2500, something like that. And that's what most of these file sizes are. And so they're less than one megabyte, like half a megabyte. So they're a lot smaller. But I was using this picture which is much bigger. It's almost 10 megabytes, 2,000 by 4,000. And I was also using this picture, which is 4 megabytes. So altogether, it was over 10 megabytes, and that's why I've been having so much trouble finishing this particular cover. So what you want to do when you're downloading, you don't have to download the biggest image. Um, I just resaved this as a, something a little bit smaller so that I'll be able to save at least at all. I mean, before, what it seems like is happening right now is if you get too high, if you go over about 10 megabytes, then you just won't be able to save. Um, and if you're under, I mean, you just need to be a little conservative or economical with your file sizes or aware of it. As long as you're under, it might take a while. Like now, because my internet connection is very slow, when I save this project, it still takes about 20 seconds, which is a really long time. So if I click on this project, I'm going to have to kind of wait and count. It seems like nothing's happening, but after 20, 25 seconds, I'll finally get the, the pop-up that says I can save the file. And so you want to click it and, and wait and make sure you've waited long enough to see if it saves. But this isn't a problem unless your file sizes are really big. So like when I'm doing something smaller for Facebook or Twitter, this won't be a problem. And if you're aware of your file sizes, when you go to um, iStock, for example, and you're downloading files, you just want to not choose the biggest one. It's it's fine actually to make your your pictures a little bit bigger. So I can choose, you know, this is a three x large because I usually don't use iStock, but I have been recently. So let's. 7,000 pixels. It's a really large file. Um, and even the large file, the large size is kind of okay. It's 1,700. You're looking for, because this flash image tool, I'm trying to build this at 6 by 9, and that's 1,800 wide by 27 high. But actually, it's not going to be perfect because you're still going to drag this file around and move it. And it's fine. Even if you get a file that's smaller, like this medium file size, 
is not big enough, but that's not really going to matter. It's 300 DPI. And so even if you get this medium one and you make it big enough to fit, you're not going to see very much of a loss of quality. Um, depends on what you're downloading. You might notice it a tiny bit in the print version, but for the most part, for fiction covers, once you're done, people aren't going to notice that kind of lack of quality. They're just going to look at the main, the, the image, the whole thing. They're not going to look at it with a magnifying glass um, and really tear it apart. So as long as it looks pretty good here when you save it, then it's going to work fine, usually in ebook and print. So I would usually just, when you're downloading, I would go for this medium size and make it a little bigger if you need to. Or just watch your size and try to get it at least each picture should be about under one megabyte. So when you're uploading your files, you can just check if you've downloaded something that's 10 megabytes like this, um, that's that's gonna kill you. It's gonna make it really hard to save your files because those are really big, big files. So it's just something to be aware of. When you're downloading, there's programs, free programs you can get that are, if you search for free image resizer, there's a lot online or you can download one where you can get a big image and just make it smaller. And also you could save it, um, like when I go into Photoshop and I'm saving a picture for web, you don't really need the maximum high quality. You could get the very high quality and you're not gonna see a difference even at close up. And that file size is really important not to overdo. So that's why I was having trouble before saving. But now that I've made my images smaller, um, we can continue. And that's just something for you to keep in mind when you're using the online tool. It's it's really true for any design, but because I usually use pretty powerful computers, I've gotten a little bit um, lazy and I just download the biggest file and that, that's what I use because my computers can usually handle it. But because this is an online tool, it's depending on different resources and I want to make sure that it works for everybody. So it'll the the less amount of file size you use if you use a few smaller images it'll be much easier to work with you won't have those crashes and it'll save faster um, and you can also look i mean usually when you're just experimenting you're playing around and adding pictures so you might actually have a lot of extra layers that aren't visible so before you go to save it you can delete some of these layers and i can just select a layer and then i can hit the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it Okay, and I'm gonna actually stop this video and then we'll continue from where we left off and I'll show you some more features of the tool.